Welcome back. Now, if you've just joined us, we showed you a clip about ghosts captured in photographs. Now, guys, first of all, can a camera actually capture ghosts? I guess there's a possibility, especially with um, the cameras now. This is a lot more sensitive. Um, they, they are the theory of ops as well. Um, from the photo so far, they were mainly figures, um, but in quite a number of photography, I guess almost everyone who has a digital uh, almost everyone has a digital camera for one. <clears throat> almost everyone who takes photos, who keeps snapping, they realize that sometimes in your photos, there is like balls of ops, right? Um, in the past, um, quite a number of paranormal enthusiasts actually say that it's probably some sort of ghost or something, but. Mm -hmm. Um, more often than not, they're actually dust particles um, that gets reflected off when you're taking the photo. And this especially so when you're in an old place, right, where there's a lot of dust being kicked up. And when you use flash photography, it gets reflected off these dust ops and you see those round balls. Um, as for figures, um, it's, it's hard to tell whether it's authentic. Um, because nowadays with all the photo editing software, I think you can pretty much make a horror movie out of a photo. Okay. Yeah. Well, specifically that picture that was snapped uh, in Malaysia uh, by Miss Lee, as those paranormal investigators pointed out, uh, there, there seem to be faces mm -hmm. in that picture. What do you think of that theory? Um, for one, I, I, I don't know about wisely, but I felt the photo for one was a bit too blur, and um, and that that's why you know, our, our human minds is an amazing tool. Sometimes when you're, you you know when for example when you, when you used to do mathematics in the past, you'd keep doing the sum many times, and when when you have the uh, you have A and C, automatically your mind will know what the answer is, and that's B. So sometimes your mind tends to want to solve certain things enthusiastically. So probably sometimes when you see something which is of a grey area, something which is not that clear, um, something where it's so grey and it's so open, your mind sometimes tends to pick out things. And that's why I'm sure you've come across all those visual, you know, those 3D, uh, what you call them, illusions. Yeah, and because it's how you look at it, the lighting when you look at it, the angle when you look at it, the color, the depth, your TV, your computer monitor, so many things that play a part. And sometimes it's about whether your mind wants to believe. Okay. What about the, the number that appeared, uh, 1944, which alludes to the Second World War, but also, well, according to those paranormal investigators, that day, the, um, the 4D winning number was... 4941 was that just a coincidence? Um, for one I don't really play 4D <laughs> so uh, but from what I know with my I, my mum my does it so you know it, it's it's really random la. It's okay. the numbers are so random it, it, it's hard to tell whether it's a coincidence or, or it really because of the photo Wisely well, you're an expert in Chinese beliefs and it's been known that some people turn to supernatural help to predict what numbers will be the winning numbers. Is it possible to do something like that? Well, I, I believe this is a totally really cultural belief. It's the belief of individual. Well, if they believe that by doing so, uh, they can have certain benefits, uh, they can have a peace of mind, uh, by all means. Well, as for what we have seen, the, uh, the pictures uh, on the faces of the of, of the goals and also the, the, the mysterious numbers coming out well we have to get the sequence right the pictures I believe the pictures was taken before the 4D came out so like what E.T. mentioned uh, we see what we believe and we want to see just like the clouds it's very ambiguous so some, some people will see it or it, it's a horse it's a, it's a lion just like the, the photograph that the, the lady uh, have took so Normally in this kind of scenario, uh, this person will not uh, uh, admire the photos alone. After seeing it, uh, he or she will be doubtful whether or not it's a paranormal photo. After, uh, after that, they will share it to the friends. And then everybody will start thinking, oh, this is uh, an image of a ghost. Everybody will agree. And then they no longer will be doubtful about the photo. And they will be very sure, oh, this is 
uh, a picture of a ghost. Mm-hmm. All these, are, I believe, are all psychological effects. Yeah. But how can you tell if a picture is actually authentic? Mm, for one, I know that um, one of our guys, Yellow Bee, um, he does all our analysis of the photos. Um, there are ways to check if it's been photoshopped. That's for one. That's, that's the primary thing you do first. And once you filter out everything, <coughs> I guess you'll be able to see if there really is something there. Um, but then again, there's a lot of factors that, that you know determine whether there's such a thing as reflection, edit staged, um, illusions, and, and especially um, because... And most of these photos are taken in the night. So usually flash photography is used. So sometimes when you're... You, you know, sometimes when you take your photos, when your flash comes on, it just not... It doesn't focus on a single spot. It may reflect off metals or some shiny surface and if it, it, it gets captured onto a wall or something and then you may take something like that I'm not totally this you know saying that all photos are fake I'm sure they are real ones but um, like I said it's a lot tougher um, to really tell if it's real because of all these factors let's say you saw a ghost okay let's say you're you're looking at a ghost is it safe to take pictures of it Will you provoke it? I uh, hope not, but um, so far we haven't really encountered anything <laughs> bad or else we wouldn't be here. Um, although I know that the, the old folks used to always tell us don't provoke them and everything. I mean, in our research, we, we respect whatever is, that whatever is nature, mm-hmm. for one. Mm-hmm. <coughs> and uh, we treat whatever it is with respect, right? And uh, we all know that, for us at least in our hearts, we know that Whatever we do is in the name of research. Um, but but that, that being said, it doesn't really mean that it's confirmed an entity or it's confirmed such a thing as ghosts. Mm. Um, but we pay, pay our due respects to the nature and Mother Earth and everything. Yeah. Okay. So out of uh, every 10 pictures that you find in the internet, how many do you reckon are real? One or maybe less? It's hard to say because we've come across many, many photos and a lot of them are fake. You, you, you don't even need to use some analysis of it. Right. You know out, outright <laughs> it's fake. Yeah. Um, but I guess in our many years, like five years plus of looking at all these photos, they are authentic ones. Um, to give you a ratio, it's hard because it's random when it's something which we, we can't explain it. It's really totally random. And when it's authentic, what do you see? Um, combination of orbs, um, figure, um, it's like mist kind of thing. Um, vortex, sorry, it's called a vortex. Yeah, vortexes. Um, yeah, it's very rare that you actually see a human form from our experience. Mm. It's usually whitish. Um, think a bit of. Casper, but less friendly because it's <laughs> white, but it's a bit luminous, kind of glowing, uh, glowing kind of thing, and yet translucent. Okay, I'm intrigued, and you yeah. have to share with us these pictures someday. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. All right, thank you so much for joining us today. Next week, we meet a man who found himself trapped in an elevator with a ghost. You don't want to miss that. Thank you. This is